Hello and welcome to Random Access, PC Mag and Computer Shoppers Tech, Computer, Hardware, Build, News Show for Computers by Computers. I'm Matthew Buzzy, Hardware Analyst at PC Mag. This is John Burek, Editor in Chief of said site, Computer Shopper. How are you doing today, John? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, buried uh, in news? Buried? Um, that might be an understatement. Um, to say the least, buried in chips anyway. Chips. Um, yeah, chip. Today's a huge chip news day. Intel um, day. Intel day. And it wasn't actually uh, necessarily what Intendo, Intel intended for today to be. No. Um, so we have some news. We have um, an 18 core processor that debuted today. We have benchmarks on that. A 16 core processor that debuted today. We have benchmarks on that. Mm -hmm. That was official. That was planned. That was planned. Intel intended on that to happen. Right. So today was supposed to be all about 18 and 16 core chips. What happened? We now have Coffee Lake, which was the rumored um, uh, desktop yeah. mainstream uh, processor platform, which was supposed to launch next week. Yes. We had a over the weekend, we had a Coffee Lake leak, a Coffee Leak. Coffee Leak, if you so, will. So um, all of the information about that stuff is out there. The test results aren't, but we have pricing, um, SKUs yep. that we can talk about today. And then Intel eventually said, all right, yeah, it's out. And they just gave out all the, they gave out all the yeah, info. Yeah, <laughs> we, were, we were briefed on it in advance, and the actual presentation we saw is now mm -hmm. officially on Intel's site. So the, um, the news is out. The news um, is, so it's, we can talk a bit official. about Coffee Lake. And we also have some other fun stuff here. On yeah, the, just some odds and ends we had around the labs. Yeah, um, these are a couple of things that we're working on reviews of. We had the test bed with the chip. Is that that's correct? We have the test bed with uh, the i9 chip in it right here. Um, tell us a little about this case. It's mm -hmm. kind of a giant fancy yeah, you, case. Yeah, you uh, may have seen this on the show before. Yeah. This is a case from Deep Cool. It's um, a uh, pre. Uh, it has water cooling in it that's pre-installed, yeah. and uh, we've been using that as our test bed for i9. It's called the Genome ROG Certified. Um, won't get too much into the case. That's not so much the point here. But the idea behind it is that it will work with the SUS motherboards and light up in fancy ways. That it does. Right. But if you can see it on screen there, I'm not sure if we have that up, but we should bring it up. If it isn't up, um, the core in that thing is um, a Core i9-7980X Extreme Edition. That's right. what we tested. That's what this review is. That's what the benchmarks we're going to be talking about is. How much is this chip? Uh, $2,000. $2,000. So this is Intel's highest Extreme Edition chip. This is the blow it all out. Uh, if you have unlimited budget, this is what you want to install. Um, is it worth it? Is it good? Well, is it fast? Let's get into it. Well, it's certainly fast. Um, Definitely fast. So it, like everything else with CPUs, it really depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, an 18-core chip is only going to really give you um, much of a benefit if you're using it with very heavily threaded yeah. software, such as video editing, um, applications, things of that sort, mm -hmm. some sort of deep learning, machine learning type yes. of applications. Uh, might be able to take advantage of that, but as we've seen so far, I mean, there is definitely a um, chart-topping advantage to having this in your system. Whether it's worth $2,000 is another question, which we'll get into. Um, I'm going to bring up here on screen um, in a moment a uh, quick uh, run through uh, Cinebench. Now, Cinebench is a uh, very heavily threaded um, application that um, Maxon, a maker of Cinema 4D, mm -hmm. use. I'm going to run a very quick run here. This, this is a program that would benefit greatly from multi-threading. Well, all cores, yeah. yeah. So what you're seeing there is this rendering happening across all of the threads and cores on the chip. Um, the numbers that we're going to see when this completes, and this is extremely fast as Cinebench goes. Yeah, we run this on all our systems. This is part of our standard speed of tests, and it can take much, much longer to fill out. Right. Um, you, that, can, you can go and get coffee. Yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah, that you number. You get a sip of coffee. No, that's, it's already so done. Yeah, that we, number you see there is the score, 3,300. Yeah, 3, uh, 3, 3, 3, I'm going to run um, one more time just for, uh, just for, just for um, not? repeatability's sake. Um, yeah, we usually, I mean, laptops, uh, stuff with even just normal and i5 and i7, you Lucky to hit over 1,000, that's high. Uh, yeah. Probably six, seven, eight hundred for a lot of systems. Mm -hmm. 3,000 is yeah, it's, it's, a little absurd. Right. Um, so there we go. We got another 3297. It varies you know, up and mm -hmm. down a um, hundred or so on each, uh, on each run. Yeah. So we're going to um, very quickly switch over here to our review of this chip. Uh, this is the i9-7980XE. Um, if you take a scan through it, this is on Computer Chopper, and um, Social Pete can um, throw up a... Uh, uh, link to this review later on. Uh, keep an eye on the comments. Yeah, if you have any questions at all, uh, so we do have Social Pete manning the comment section. So if you have any questions about the chips, about the products, um, Pete can read out what you type below. So feel free to do so. And somebody has followed up on that advice. What do you have for us, reader? OK. How is the 16-core i9 compared to the uh, 1950X? That, is Coffee Lake yeah. worth replacing your 770X? That is the main point of comparison, and that's what we're going to kind of okay, get so to by the end of this. That is, uh, right. Well, let me make a. That is the the yeah. let me make pulling quick, off the curtain. Yeah, let me make a quick um, uh, 
clarification there. Coffee Lake is Intel's next generation mainstream chip. We have not tested that yet. Yeah. Um, we have the chips in house and they will be tested um, in due course and there is an embargo involved with that. The embargo that lifted today or that was broken and thus lifted today was just the news about what the chips were and what their price is. Yeah, nobody has those yet. So what I'm going to assume is, is that this chip, the um, 7980XE, which is part of Intel's Core X line, that's their enthusiast line, yeah. how that compares to the 1950X and, the, and AMD's Threadripper. And that's what we were going to get to in some of these um, yeah. comparisons that we have here. Yeah, sorry if I misheard the Coffee Lake part. That is, the main comparison for this chip is we're talking about is the i9 Extreme Edition chip. Uh, right. The, the Threadripper chip that you mentioned is, in fact, the, the main point of comparison. So we'll see which one head-to-head -head and value-wise is, is better bang for your buck right. um, by yeah. these numbers. Yeah, so to reiterate again, Threadripper is AMD's high-end Core X is Intel's high end. What we're talking about here is Core X. Yeah. So if you take a quick peek here at um, uh, this uh, Cinebench chart, and you can bring that up on um, on screen there, um, if you look over on the left, you see a 3377 score, which is roughly equivalent to what we got when we ran our uh, real time Cinebench there. Um, AMD Threadripper, 3000, and that's with um, all cores running. So you're looking at... Um, and this Threadripper chip, again, is how much in comparison to this? Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. So it's a 999 chip, and that's in, uh, excuse me, AMD's high end. Um, it's half the price of this. So you're seeing, on, at least on this one test, and again, just one test, right. um, approximately 10% improvement. If that's for, worth $1,000 to you? Right. <laughs> that's, that's a judgment you have to make, and depending yeah. on whether your time is money and how much money your time is worth. Right. So there's that. Um, so that's Cinebench. Uh, we could scan down a little bit here. We'll probably skip over iTunes encoding. iTunes encoding is a single-threaded um, sort of application. If you're buying a $2,000 chip to do single-threaded <laughs> applications, uh, you need to send me your money. Sometimes I feel, though, like Google Chrome needs a uh, multi-threading, hyper-expensive chip because, <laughs> boy, boy, that thing gets slow. Well, if you have $2,000 to... Uh, <laughs> Just to run Google Chrome. Br br yeah, please mm -hmm. bring, it, bring it in tomorrow. Yeah, Ooh, the man. Um, Handbrake um, is a... Uh, video editing program that is uh, pretty commonly used um, by folks who are doing conversions from one format to another. Especially prevalent now that uh, 4K video, which is huge and takes a long time to encode, like benefiting more and more. Obviously, originally HD and stuff was time consuming as it was, but right. the so, huge 4K files that people are doing now. Right, so what we're doing in this test here is taking a large 4K file, which is about 12 minutes long, converting it to 1080p. Um, what we're seeing here is a few seconds advantage for the Intel Core. Um, versus the Threadripper, but nothing huge. I mean, what could be happening here, and this will only uh, sort of uh, become evident when um, new versions of the Handbrake, for instance, come out, mm -hmm. or new versions of some other programs come out, is whether the number of cores you sort of plateau at a certain point, and whether the scaling actually uh, really gives you any benefit. Right, if so, any program out there is even making use of right. what you have. Yeah, because I mean, if you look at, for instance, like the... Um, the Intel Core i7-7820X in this chart here, that's the third one over. It's about six minutes, and that's an eight-core chip. Um, you're not seeing a 2x improvement on the 18-core chip, or more that you might expect just by having right. that many more cores. So there may be elements of the software itself that don't um, necessarily take advantage of cores in a one-to-one -one scaling yeah. fashion. So you do, of course, future-proof yourself as well, though. Well, there for, is that. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a... Um, let me move on to another uh, thing here. Pavre, where we are... Um, doing some ray tracing, um, not a tremendous um, amount of advantage. But then again, when you're talking about app, um, excuse me, uh, tasks that take a minute, mm -hmm. you know, five seconds faster is proportionally actually kind of a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's a good percentage-wise, it's a good chunk of time. Right, but it's not twice, you know, no. any, anything close in terms of timing like no. you would expect if you're spending twice as much money. Yeah. So there's a little wrinkle on that actually about it costing twice as much, which I'll get it, get to in a minute. But just to scan down, there's always a caveat, isn't there? Yeah, Blender will skip over seven zip file compression. This is a very heavily threaded application. Um, you can see it here too. It's about just doing uh, mental math here, a little more than 10%, just mm. like we saw in Cinebench. So, um, Consistent. Yeah, so bottom line across the test there, from what we've seen early on, and again, we haven't seen new versions of software that could actually take advantage mm -hmm. of um, this much, um, so this many cores, um, you're paying roughly twice as much yeah. for roughly 10 to 20% probably right now in terms of performance. So we have... Um, you know, some of the numbers there. Um, the thing to bear in mind is that, again, $999 for the Threadripper chip, $2,000 for the uh, Intel chip, but there's supporting stuff around 
each of these chips. That right, you have to motherboards factory. and other things you have mm -hmm. to buy to make this work in your system, obviously. Um, right. So does that change the does that change the outlook of the pricing at all? A little for bit. Intel's favor or against it? Um, in Intel's favor, but not vastly. So um, the cheapest Intel motherboard you're going to find that works on uh, this platform um, runs about two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars. Um, the cheapest uh, AMD board you're going to find is in the roughly three hundred fifty dollar mm. range. So in essence, the cheapest um, sort of solution for each of these is going to add another hundred dollars to the AMD. So right. in essence, you're, I mean, this is again, not, you know, a one-to-one uh, -one thing, right, but right. you're essentially paying a hundred to hundred fifty dollar tax on the AMD for the motherboards. There are only about seven or so um, AMD compatible, or thread AMD yeah, thread yeah, it's a little more difficult to find. Um, also, I guess the caveat on that caveat is if you're shopping for a two thousand or a thousand dollar chip, the extra hundred, hundred fifty, yeah. probably may not be the, the deciding factor in, in your choice, but um, right. it's something to consider because right. yeah. you know, I mean, they, they don't work on their own. So. Right, and they both use the same uh, types of memory, although you know, um, in terms of uh, memory speeds, there may be some up or down, but um, you know, up and down price play. But right. again, when you're talking you know, t one chip being twice the price of the other, you really have to need you know, the uh, maximum uh, sort of possible performance out of your single tower you sure. know, for those kind of applications to justify that. that I mean, and not to give it too much short shrift, but I'm going to switch over on the screen here also uh, to an i9-7960X, mm -hmm. which is um, also debuted. This is a 16-core chip. The um, Not quite 18, but... Yeah, not quite 18, but hey, we can all be 18 cores, you know. No, we can't. Um, this one is uh, $16.99, so... If somehow that two thousand dollar chip was just too much, but hey, sixteen ninety. But sixteen, I mean, no, no, it's, it's, right. it's a breeze. Yeah, there's that. So I mean, this chip was, um, I think, in most of our tests, around five to six percent behind the eighteen core. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at it pretty, um, you know. Uh, yeah, that's that scales know. well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a substantial amount of money, obviously, for yeah. any CPU, but you're not going to um, see a huge drop off versus the eighteen core. That said, I mean, it's even comparing this model to one of the Threadrippers, you're looking sure. at a you know, a pretty big price delta. Um, so bottom line is if you're really um, interested in an extreme high-end multitasking system, you know, where you're doing, say, video editing and streaming at the same time yeah. or playing games and streaming at the same time or rendering. Yeah, any one of those activities for the most part is not. Like gaming, I know people who think that would be the most intensive thing. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Like you barely, you arguably don't even need an i7 for gaming right. most of the time. So like... Going this high, if that's all you're gonna do, don't do that. But if you're like a big streamer and you want to edit video and you're doing all this stuff alongside your games, different story. We have a question also. Ah, okay. To clarify something for viewers, everything that we're talking about here right now is just for desktops, right? That is correct. Yes, yeah. they're not gonna put these absurd chips in a, in a laptop. Right. Yeah. Um, right now. Be the, great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right now the, um, on the AMD side, um, Ryzen. Um, we're not seeing mobile versions of Ryzen yet. On um, the Intel side, there are, okay, so it gets a little complicated. So the Coffee Lake thing that leaked today, there eventually will be mobile versions of that. Um, but the, um, <laughs> but the. Uh, you just follow, like, it's, it's right. all just nested. Actually, his, hand, his hand symbol's actually pretty I think much this is spot on, it. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's uh, chips based on Katie Lake Refresh, which is what is being known as Caddy Lake R, that should be hitting the market pretty much any day now. We should mm -hmm. be getting the first ones into the labs. Um, but the deal with uh, KB Lake R is um, it's not really on the same architectural level as um, the Coffee Lake stuff that's sure. on the desktop. Yeah, it's, sort like of a, a it's like a there. Point yeah. 0.5 iteration of the new, right. the new stuff. Yeah, so there's disconnects within the mobile line, and there's also a disconnect between the mobile and the desktop. So, yes, this is all strictly desktop. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah these are, these are saying, no. Yeah, these are like for workstations for stuff you'd edit video on, which people do on their laptops, obviously, but... You're gonna get an i7 for that if you're really gonna gonna do it. Uh, it would be an astronomical price on yeah. a laptop, also. Well, yeah, I mean, I think sort of if you're doing workstation type work on uh, a laptop these days, you're probably gonna buy like a Xeon workstation, yeah. a mobile Xeon workstation. That's sort of where things are at at this point mm -hmm. with a mobile um, process, with probably a mobile Quadro. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, these are these are very much in a different world than the uh, the mobile stuff is right yeah. now. Um, that will change, but by that time, of course, these things will probably... Then the desktop stuff will well. be up, yeah. Right. So yeah. You can never so, keep up, truly. Yeah, so let's uh, do a quick switch. Oh, All right, we have, we have a question, question while oh, you do okay. so. We've got someone asking about how many PCI Express lanes there are, and also, uh, can yes. you explain what those are? That's yeah. a good question. Okay, yeah, so on the, uh, that is actually a uh, good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so on, in, uh, on the Intel chips, the Core X line has variable PCI Express lanes depending on which Core X chip you're looking at. And basically, PCI Express lanes, to sort of summarize them in a nutshell, yeah, yeah. are um, 
the internal bandwidth paths that allow you to connect uh, peripherals uh, to the PCI Express bus. Mm -hmm. That may be video cards, SSDs, and the like. Yeah. Namely, it, people are mostly concerned for it with graphics cards normally. You can, whether you could put one or two in, use two in conjunction. Um, so if your board only supports one, you can't have like two 1080, GTX 1080s in, your, in right. your desktop. Well, the thing is, with the PCI Express lanes, there's two kinds of them as well. There's the on... <laughs> to be more confusing. Because we're, not, because we're not getting deep enough here. Uh, the, um, there are the on-CPU lanes, and then there are the chipset lanes. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're talking about here strictly that vary are the CPU lanes, uh, which are the ones that are typically associated, like I said, with um, uh, video cards. Right. So with the uh, AMD Threadripper stuff, all of the Threadripper chips support 64 lanes, mm -hmm. regardless of the CPU. And that's the $1,000 CPU down to the um, $500 or $550 one. The um, Intels, as I mentioned, scale according to which core X you're looking at. So the highest end ones, I believe, are 44, and they scale down into the 20s with the lowest end core Xs. Right. So you've got 44 lanes. If you could find a way to use up 44 lanes, more power to you. I mean, hey, yeah. I mean, I'm guessing if you're burning 2000 or $1,700 on a chip, I mean, you can, you can afford it. <laughs> you can afford it, yeah, go for it. I right. mean, more power, more power to you, as you said. Right. Literally, more power yeah, to you. Yeah, but I think we've reached a point, though, is like suddenly we have, hey, we have all these PCI Express lanes, but now... NVIDIA has deprecated SLI to just two cards. Yes. Um, just saw a piece um, this morning about how it's possible that AMD has uh, deprecated their Crossfire branding and is not even calling it Crossfire with DirectX 12 anymore. So the idea being, since this stuff is going to become increasingly <laughs> dependent on um, uh, developers to yeah. implement, there's less and less reason to have you know, the maximum possible number of PCI Express lanes. Gotcha. That said, if you're all about that, Threadripper's got 64. The, um, Throw some stuff in there. Yeah, the i9, the two high-end i9s are 44, I believe. And um, you can put a lot of stuff on that. Yeah. You know, a couple of video cards, a whole bunch of PCI Express SSDs, and I think you're going to run out of money before you run out of lanes these days. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah long story short, they allow you to add more. Yeah. I mean, if anybody out there you know, has a, uh, a real-world application that they use you know, that many lanes for and are pressed, please. Yeah, please. actually something useful. It's not like please. frivolous. Because, right. yeah, you can always get more use out of it, but right. please, truly useful. Is... Yeah, please contact us in the comments or contact us offline. Yeah. We, we'd like to talk to you. Truly. All right, so um, in terms of... Uh, Core X, that's where we're at. You can mm -hmm. check out the reviews on Computer Shopper. Yeah, um, all these details are more in the yeah. full written reviews on Computer Shopper. Right, also uh, Sister Site Extreme Tech, I believe, has a review of the 18 core chip for a different perspective and some different testing. If you want opinions on things. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So we're going to uh, switch over uh, on screen to um, the other. This was in, news. Yeah, this was Intel's Coffee Lake. This is the official slides that released on Coffee Lake after they leaked. They said, you know what, have it. Here's our presentation. Here's what we plan to show you um, with pricing and performance and all sorts of things. Right. Well, the performance stuff we'll be testing you know, independently. Ourselves, yeah. These, right. are their, these are their, you know, their, 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 their support, their threads, and memory, all that stuff. Right. So the interesting thing here, and uh, pardon me while I don't look at the camera, but look at the, um, the monitor over here. Um, I'll, I'll look. I'll yeah, look you can, you can, you can I'll just have eye contact there. Um, we've got uh, six chips coming in the first wave. There may be others. Um, We've got two i7s, two i5s, and two i3s. The interesting thing is that there's a um, overclockable unlocked i3, which there was in the previous generation, mm -hmm. um, at $168. The other interesting thing is a true four-core i3 at $117, which is actually kind of interesting yeah. in that previous i3s were um, just dual core with multiple threads, and a lot of games now you know, demand mm -hmm. four cores. So that is a very interesting... It's interesting. It bumps up the f kind of the floor further and further to... Right. The most budget stuff is really fast, right. honestly. Yeah, the um, low-end uh, gaming space might get really interesting there mm. because it's sort of... Couple that with a 1050 Ti, right. and you're talking a, probably yeah, like a $800, game. $900 great, yeah, great laptop. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking at um, this chart to us, I mean, that's actually kind of the most interesting thing. Is that $117 i3-8100 SKU um, because you can do f pure four cores for, you know, around the price of the lowest end Ryzen chip, mm -hmm. um, the, one of the Ryzen 3s, which were kind of interesting in that yeah. space. Um, at the top end, no surprises there, you got an i7-8700K, which parallels the last how many generations of i7s. Yeah. Um, base clock is 3.7 um, and uh, boost is 4.7. That, I'm guessing, we haven't tested it yet, is probably going to be the um, sort of creme de la creme of gaming chips. Mm. You know, um, I have a feeling that you know, that one's going to be like the 7700K, a big, you know, uh, a big winner there. Um, do we have a question? We do have a question. 
just for a basis of comparison, so we have all the clock speeds for these different chips here. Um, what were the clock speeds for the Core i9s we were just talking about? Yeah, they were in the, I don't have them off the top of my head, but they were under three. Um, the idea there is oftentimes when you have that many cores, they are lower They're clocked. each lower clocked. Right, but yeah, but I believe... There's I, 18 of them. <laughs> <laughs> there was that. But I believe, and I may get this wrong, but I believe it was 2.6 on the, um, the 18 core. Mm. But don't hold me to that. Right. Uh, um, you'll often, yeah, you'll often see like a high-end desktop not i7, not i9, go to like 4.2 at the top. That's usually where they max out, but it's right. not a it's not a crazy i9 chip. Yeah, we didn't get into we didn't get into overclocking, and one of my colleagues did a fair bit of overclocking um, sort of uh, experimentation on the i9s, and there's a lot of headroom there. So even though 2.6 or 2.8, where they live at base, is sounds fairly low, yeah. um, he was able to get it up to about four mm. um, on several cores, and not on all 18 cores. But on several cores for um, you know a sustained period doing some renders, so there's a lot of there's a lot of sway yeah. in there. Again, if you're willing to overclock two thousand dollars CPU, you're mm -hmm. a braver person than I. Indeed, yeah, yeah. playing with fire there, almost <laughs> potentially, <laughs> potentially literally. Yeah. So with the um, with the coffee lakes, you can see here. I mean, the pricing um, is roughly parallel at each level to the uh, previous gen KB Lake stuff. Um, high end is at three sixty, which is um, around where we expect it to yeah. be. The big surprise is, insofar as there's a surprise here, again is the Overclockable i3 um, at 168 and the true four core. Um, the other thing I actually failed to point out here is you might notice the i5s and i7s are all six core. They're yeah. not four core. Um, Again, up, up, up. Right. If, yeah, and if you're unclear the, too, because the, there's the extreme edition chips, which are high end chip. This is the whole new family, the whole new line is getting refreshed. So Intel does, it says eighth generation there. Uh, you've heard us say terms like KB Lake and Skylake. Those are the, if, if you're just, you know, beginner's course, I don't know who's watching. Um, those are like the refreshes, they kind of, they update nearly everything, and then that in turn causes laptop manufacturers and desktop manufacturers to release all new laptops with this whole new generation of chips right. in them. It gives you things like more power efficiency, better speeds, more cores. Um, so this is, this is the coming next generation of chips right. that'll roll out into nearly everything you see. Right, and the thing with these is, um, you'll notice the thermals, um, or the uh, TDPs, the ratings for uh, power consumption, are still fairly moderate for six core chips here. Um, Looking also at the uh, the other sort of essential specs here, the uh, on the i7s and the i5s, you're seeing a uptick in uh, memory support, mm -hmm. uh, memory speed support up to uh, 2,666 megahertz um, on base, and probably be able to yeah. boost them up a little more if you want to go you know that route. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the line. Um, we'll be uh, taking a look at a couple of these chips over the next week. We've got them in the test bed right now, um, and actually you can tease that we'll be building one of these uh, for you on camera. And stay tuned, you know, next week for that. Yeah. Um, so that will be uh, the next uh, phase of Coffee Lake, apart from the Coffee Leak. That was the Coffee weekend. Leak Stage One, Coffee Leak Stage yeah, Two. Build it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There is that. Yeah, we woke up this morning to find out about Coffee Leak and. Uh, it would happen basically over nothing like a night. middle of the night Intel leak to really get everyone everyone going on a Monday yeah on a Monday morning love to be it sure. so yeah so that's where we're at with Coffee Lake um, Core X if you have any other questions about it um, please just throw them into the comments and we're happy to uh, backtrack onto that um, in the meantime we have a couple of other things here yeah just some odds and ends you. switching from processors to graphics because who doesn't love a good graphics card uh, accessory what is this box I've been accidentally hitting into it this for the show. duration of the show. It's a good thing we've tested it already. Yeah, um, yeah that's so, what I like. Yeah, let's get a camera view on that. Uh, maybe we could put it up where the, uh, the uh, Red Ripper chip is there. Okay, great. Excellent. So what is this thing? Um, let's bring up a uh, quick change here. Yeah. It's called the Aorus GTX 1070 Gaming Box. So this... Um, and that it is. All right. So we have a review of it on Computer Shopper. This is an interesting product, and we'll probably bring it back on the show um, in a week or two when we have some time mm -hmm. um, to do a little bit of live benchmarking on it. Um, we're a little bit leery of doing that right now because um, it's interesting. Let's just put it that way. I feel like in tech terms, <laughs> interesting usually <laughs> not the biggest endorsement. Right. Well, we can't take it out necessarily in this box. What this thing is is an external graphics card, um, and it plugs in via Thunderbolt 3 mm -hmm. um, and requires a laptop, or I mean, you could use a desktop. It's not much point right. generally, and with a few exceptions. Um, to basically run games or um, graphics accelerated uh, applications right. um, where you don't have powerful graphics. Yeah, the idea is you're going to be able to buy and put a better card in this box than will be in probably most or the average laptop. Um, so if you want to take your laptop on the go and do stuff like 
you know, browsing on your train or on your commute or whatever, use it around your office, and you come home and your actual good graphics card is sitting here in this box, you right. plug it in to play games. Right, so the different, the, one of the differentiating factors of this thing is that it actually comes with a card inside of it. So most of the boxes that you could buy um, are a bo just a box mm -hmm. with an empty slot inside. This one actually comes with a GTX 1070 card and it's actually kind of small. So um, we don't actually have another one um, in stock here at the moment to show you, but the Razer makes one called the Core. Um, bit, they're all a bit larger. Than they're this. quite a bit yeah. larger. Yeah, if you were to put a full size um, GTX 1080, for instance, in that, it would stick out probably mm -hmm. uh, you know a couple more inches from the front of it. Yeah. So there's that, right? Um, anyway, we did quite a bit of testing and troubleshooting with this. Um, tried it on a uh, Toshiba laptop, which we have over here. I'll just wave it around a bit. Um, very thin portage laptop. Which not a gaming a, system. But right. By not any means. a gaming system. Yeah. It's a th but it does have Thunderbolt 3 ports on the edge. Plugged it into that, and um, after a firmware update to the box and a uh, good bit of um, mm -hmm. experimentation, we got it running. Um, so pretty significant uh, upticks in uh, performance. And again, that's, we'll that's probably bring good. this back on the show and do a little bit of live benchmarking on it in a future week. But that if you does. want to find out about it for now, we've got a review on the review proper of it. Yeah, so it runs about 600 bucks. Which, how much is the 1070 on its own? Uh, about 350 So $250 for the box. That's Pretty much what the other boxes cost. Yeah, lost. enables uh, your laptop to be a gaming system. It's it's maybe yeah. worth a couple hundred extra dollars right. to you. Yeah. So the key thing is, is your laptop needs to have um, a GTX. Excuse me, a uh, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 3, 3. port. Um, and there's a, a GTX 1070 already inside of the box there. So you sort of plug and go. Yeah. Um, the thing then is, you are limited to a 1070 for the rest of time. Which is not the worst place to be. No, well, it's not. That said, though, um, future generations, if you can get a short card that outperforms a 1070, which presumably a couple of years from now might exist, Probably. you could swap it in there. You can op We opened it up, we tore it, op we tore it open, you can swap the card Okay, out. you can get in there. But you, that said, the other th these are what are called eGPUs, external graphics cards, and there are other boxes out there that have bigger um, sort of dimensions mm. and uh, perhaps higher wattage power supplies. I'll have to do a comparison on the, the power supplies between the different eGPU boxes. Um, that might enable a more power-hungry and bigger card in there. Gotcha. So, yeah, but the idea here is you don't want to mess with any of that. You just want to buy a solution. Yeah, it's a, it's an option for right. you to have. Yeah, so I would keep an eye out online for um, both our review and for other reviews of this to see sort of compatibility with specific laptops. Sure. Because um, sometimes it requires a Thunderbolt 3 driver update depending on what the uh, manufacturer has on there. Um, this particular model required a firmware update just to get the Thunderbolt bandwidth working. So it shows you these are really kind of early stage products in some yeah. ways. With Thunderbolt Let me show you some, starting to mature. some port action. You yeah. know, it has all, it has everything you want built in. Yeah, built so if you look at the back there, you'll notice there's actually a bunch of USBs on there as well. Um, yeah. You can also use this as a sort of a dock. So in other words, you bring your laptop home, um, you plug in the Thunderbolt 3 cable, you can charge it over the Thunderbolt 3 cable if the laptop has a low enough um, power consumption, mm. depending on, depends on the model. But you could also um, use it as sort of a um, docking solution. So you might keep your uh, keyboard, mouse plugged in there. You can even keep a monitor plugged into this box. Yeah, so you can kind of like play. a home a home setup. Yeah, brought so to I mean, you by Aorus. Aorus, yeah. So who is Aorus? They're actually Gigabyte. They are Gigabyte. If you've if you've used or bought Gigabyte laptops. Um, yeah, a big component maker. Gigabyte does video yeah. cards. So Aorus is their gaming brand. Yep. Um, so that's who they are. Um, do we have a question? No. Sorry. No. Okay. Sorry. We Sorry. thought we did. That's good. But, but we some. Um, so yeah. So that's the Aorus TTX 1070 gaming box. Yes. About 600 bucks. Current review on Computer Shopper. Mm -hmm. um, read it. Proceed with caution. But it's an interesting product. It's and, out there for you. Yes, there is that. If you want it. So speaking of gaming, that you don't have to actually do any sort of. Yes. This is to. quick stuff. I think we've had the Zephyrus on before, but this is just sort of another thing that's going around to keep an eye on. Uh, Max Q laptops. Um, Nvidia's Max Q technology is something that they're working with partner manufacturers with to get their high-end cards like the GTX 1070 and like the GTX 1080 into slimmer and slimmer systems. Traditionally, those came in bigger 17-inch hulking laptops, uh, their best cards, and um, they'd like to change that. So <laughs> they are uh, offering things like this, which is this is the Asus ROG Zephyrus. This is the MSI Stealth Pro. Um, this is actually an old chassis that they put the Max-Q card in, and this is a brand new design chassis that actually has some fancy things like a flap uh, to ventilate um, when you open the screen. It open, it, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the, the bottom flap opens up uh, for better ventilation. And the reason for that is because these high-end cards are in uh, these small chassis, normally that would take too much power, it would, take too much, um, it would, it would make too much heat uh, for the, such a small body to be able to contain. So what the Max-Q initiative is, is NVIDIA is telling them, look, if you, if you limit it to this much power and if you tune down the chip to this particular peak sweet spot, 
Um, you'll get the best performance out of these cards without overheating these slim chassis. So uh, these are a couple options. Um, <laughs> the bottom of this one is felt, and that's because they didn't redesign this chassis for it, um, that it gets very hot because it wasn't originally really made to, uh, to deal with that amount of heat, I think. Even with the tuned down Max-Q version of the 1070 that's in here, um, it gets very hot. So I think so they don't want you to burn yourself on the bottom of it. Uh, there's felt, and then this part that is exposed gets very, very, very warm. Yeah, I think um, we, um, when Peter Chopper did some testing on this, it was, um, we used an uh, IR thermometer. 140 degrees near the center. Yeah, it's not, it's not it's cool. It's, yeah. yeah, it's warm. This, um, this was quieter and less hot. Uh, this, and, and this has a GTX 1080 in it, which is impressive considering, I mean, the, the thinness of this thing. Um, but that's because of the special thermals that went into it. It's not cheap. Um, we do have the review up there. I did give it an editor's choice. It's $2,700. It does have a GTX 1080. It's less than an inch thick, though. Uh, it's nicely designed. Um, the unfortunate thing about this stuff, even though it's slim and portable, it's a 15-inch laptop with a GTX 1080 in it, and it's thin and light, uh, the battery is the, on both of them is super short. Um, so you would think portable, you would think like, okay, I can take it with me and play games on the plane or something. It's more like, I'm going to take it with me, it's not going to weigh my luggage down, I'm going to play right. games when I get where I'm right. going. Right, where you plug it in when you get there. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, because it lasted, I think, less than three hours. Right, and actually, interestingly, you would much. show, yeah, if you turn that around and open it up again to show off the, uh, mm. the opening action, so there's a sort of a, a thin piece of metal on the bottom of the uh, machine here, and I don't know yeah. if we can show that on camera. Um, it just occurred to me, looking at the fuzzy bottom of the... Um, the shot? Yeah, if we can get that there. Um, looking at the fuzzy bottom it's hard, of the... It's hard to see. Yeah, it might be hard to make out. But, but this, this bottom portion opens about uh, about an inch, I'd say, maybe half an inch, when probably, you open yeah. this flat, mm -hmm. um, and it helps vent out. It has some red LEDs, because why not? Because of course, right? Yeah. But what occurred to me is that, because this has this felt on the bottom, and that has that sort of layer that separates it, I'm wondering if Asus didn't design it that way to specifically insulate your lap from the GTX Pos That is possibly right? another reason, yeah. Right. I mean, this, I was saying this gets pretty hot on the bottom, but then you're much closer in practice here to the GPU. Right. And, you know, yeah, it, it, both, it both gives it ventilation and keeps it away from you. Keep the, um, yeah, maybe that quarter inch, you can maybe, get a good shot you know, a, here. Uh, sort of a saving grace. It, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's an it's an interesting design. I think we'll see more of these Max-Q laptops. Um, yeah. I think everyone's probably going to jump on board. Yeah, actually, the only other one that was announced was announced this morning. It was a um, uh, Gigabyte machine. There you go. Think of it. Um, there. Gigabyte makes a machine called the Aero 15, mm. um, and they announced this morning a Aero 15X, which is essentially the same chassis, so sort of in the same vein as MSI using their existing chassis. Yeah, it's an interesting technology. The, the card... Uh, the Max Q version of both of these good cards doesn't take too much of a performance drop, um, all things considered, when you tune it down for Max Q. Uh, it, is, it isn't as good as a fully powered GTX 1080 or GTX 1070 in mm -hmm. these two cases, but um, you do get pretty good performance out of them still, so it's something to keep an eye on if you actually want a system that isn't a million pounds and has such a good card in it. Mm -hmm. So There's that. that is something to keep an eye on. Yeah, so Max Q is, is happening. We have two machines here. We imagine we'll see a couple more probably yeah. in the coming weeks. Uh, keep an eye out for uh, reviews of, of them both. All of them. Right. And I think that's all we got today. Um, yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Component Fest, Intel Fest, Threadripper Comparison Fest. Fest. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Max it's... Q, um, Max Q Fest. Max Q Fest. Uh, yeah, um... Threadripper, maybe a better value, all things considered, than that i9 Extreme Edition. Um, this box, you give it a three, three and a half yeah. the graphics enclosure. Three and a half out of five, or three out of five, sorry. Three out of five. Three yeah. out of five. Um, yeah, that's a, it's a product category that is burgeoning. More. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. it's interesting, but I, I'll keep an eye. We have one more question before oh. the outro. Oh, yeah. Just to say it again, what's the name of the laptop on the right? This uh, is the, uh, this right, my right, stage right. This is the Asus ROG Zephyrus. Um, it's the GX51VI, I think, is the official model name. You can find it on our site. Um, it is an editor's choice because of its innovation, because of how, th I actually think it's nicely designed too, which mm -hmm. is something going for it. In, um, the case, in the case we're talking camera right, this is called the... That's the MSI... GS63 CS, Self Pro. Yeah, Self Pro. 7RG, seven seven RF, RG, RF, something actually, like that. Actually, why don't I just look at the sticker? Oh, RG. Yeah. RG. Yeah. RG. Um, yeah. Yeah, so MSI gs 63 VR R 7 RG Stealth Pro. Yeah, um, right. That one um, again is the one that's in the existing chassis. So there is a Stealth yeah. Pro out there that is not using the GTX. Whereas chassis. you see, Asus kind of went a whole different route, moved this keyboard down onto the bottom to make room for all the ventilation up here. So this is fully designed from the ground up, knowing that this was a Max Q system. So um, there's a lot of things they took into account to make that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, that is all we have. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Matthew Buzzy. This has been John Burek. Tune in. Next time for Random Access, and check out PCMag.com and ComputerShower.com for reviews of these products, reviews of the chips, and everything in between, tech-related and beyond. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.